All right. We're going to learn a few conceptual things. Uh, symmetry about the 45 degree angle, relative velocity, and I'll do the demo with uh, a race between this track and that track. But what you're going to do on tonight's homework is very much what you did last night, just slightly harder versions of those problems, problems that are going to require increasing levels of cleverness on your part. So just give those problems a really good shot. Don't give up on them early. You know, give them as much time as, as they require. And uh, good luck on those kinematics problems. But let's learn a couple few uh, conceptual issues. Number one, symmetry of range. <coughs> symmetry of range about a 45 degree launch angle. <coughs> First of all, what launch angle gets you the maximum range? That is the maximum x distance for something to go. Yeah, 45 degrees. Yeah. If you're a long jumper and you want to jump as far a distance as possible, your launch angle when you jump in the air is going to have to be as high as you can be. Now, there's other issues because if you achieve a 45 degree launch angle, in, in so doing, you're hitting the ground in a weird way and you might lose some of your speed. So there, there's more to it than that. But, but generally, you get maximum range with a 45 degree launch angle. Let me show you that now. Here, <coughs> I have a I have a launcher, this is called a mini launcher, and it will launch this steel ball, and the steel ball will go right in that cup. I'm going to put this launcher at a 45 degree launch angle, which it has a little protractor here with a string hanging down, so all I have to do is just adjust this until the string is at 45 degrees. Okay, then I'll tighten it up a little, and then I'll put the ball in, kick, kick, kick. And I'm going to pull the trigger, and the ball will go right in that cup. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. One, two, three. Kicky. Oh. <laughs> it rimmed in and out. What the heck? Did you see that? Yeah. Let's do that again. Here we go. One, two, three. It's going right in the cup, baby. One, two, three. Uh. Yeah. Okay, you guys okay with that? that? That's what I get with a 45 degree launch angle. Now, where is this ball going to land relative to the cup? At a, at a 55 degree launch angle. What if I increase the launch angle to 55 degrees, which I'm going to do now. I increase the launch angle to 55 degrees. Where is that ball going to land? Short. How many people say it's going to fall short of the cup? Okay, let's find out. One, two, three, uh. You guys okay that it fell short? Yeah. Fell short of the cup. Someone's going to have to get that ball. Thank you. Okay. So, so here's, here's what happened. When I had a 45 degree launch angle, my ball had its maximum range. When I increase the launch angle to 55 degrees, it went higher, but it fell short as far as its range goes. Okay, let me get that from you now. Thank you. So I'm going to put my cup where I think it should go, although it looked like the ball landed a little to the left, too. But I'm going to put my cup where it should go. You notice I moved it to the left? So here I'm going to get my uh, perfect 55 degree launch angle. Oh, I seem to recall I have to move it back. I have a little pencil here. I did this last night, but I think I have to move it back. A little bit. Okay, here it goes. It goes right in the cup. One, two, three. Uh. Yeah, I've moved this thing a little, haven't I? Yeah, just a second. Uh, okay, and then I just messed it Okay, here. Thank you. Yeah, you might want to just stand over there. 
I must have moved this a little because it's missing my cup. One, two, three. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Uh, there we go. That's beautiful. Okay. Here's my question to you. What other launch angle is going to get me the same range besides 55 degrees? 75. 75? You think if I shoot it off at a 75 degree angle, like this, that it's going to somehow get it there? How many people are thinking 35 degrees? Hey, good for you guys. I think that's an incredibly good guess because that's the way our universe works. Yeah, if you launch it at a 35 degree angle, it'll get there a lot quicker, but it'll have the same range. Here, let me show you that now. I'm now going to lower this to a 35 degree launch angle. Alrighty, and boy, will you be amazed when it goes right in that cup. Here we go, 35 degree launch angle. One, two, three. <laughs> oh gosh, why is it going? Now it's like got to go this way a little. Okay, okay, let's try that again. If it's going off kilter left and right, it's not the distance that's the problem. It's just not going. It's going left and right. Okay, here we go. Thirty-five degree launch angle. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm thinking science is a lie. <laughs> that might be true. Here, let's move that guy back a little. There's always a. Okay, here we go. 35 degree launch angle. One, two, three. Uh. <laughs> is it hitting the side or something? Here, should I go back a little that way then? I'll move the cup instead of the shooter. Okay, here we go. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay, that went in great. Here, let me now show 55 just so you know that it's not a fluke. <laughs> and then here comes the 55 degree launch angle. Whoops. Yeah, a little bit too high. By the way, being off by like one degree messes up everything. Okay. Ah, silly thing. Okay, let's put it right there. I have to move it. When it, when it hits at the small launch angle, it, it moves the cup back a little. So I have to move the cup back up when I do 55. Here comes 55. Okay. So do you wow. believe? You believe. Okay. So the key is whatever angle gets you a particular range, the other angle symmetric about 45 gets you the same range. So for example, what if I had a 63 degree launch angle? Okay. It would have the same range as what other launch angle would get me the same range as a 63 degree launch angle? How many people think of 27? Okay, Fatima, how do you know it was 27? I found the difference between 63 and 45 and then I subtracted that from 45. Thank you very much. She found the difference between 63 and 45, which is 18, and subtracted 18 from 45 to get 27. So as a 27 degree launch angle, so here's my other question. Do you notice a relationship between the two angles that are symmetric about 45? What's true about them? Yes, Gavin? They add up to 90 degrees. Yeah, they add up to 90 degrees. So that's another thing. Launch angles that are complementary of each other will have the same range. You guys okay with that? Okay, so let's say you're living in the 1500s and you are the captain of a company of archers, and you are English archers, you're English longbowmen, and you're gonna have to beef it out with a bunch of French knights, okay? So you're up on some hill with your bows, and you're going toing, 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 and you're, you're shooting at these French knights, but because you know physics, because you went in some sort of time machine and were transported back to the 1500s, because you're actually living in the you know, 2000s, you realize that, hey, these knights are blocking my arrows with their, with their shields. So what I need to do is shoot at a shallow launch angle and a high launch angle. And that way they have to choose which arrows to block. You see what I mean? And so then that's what they did. That's what they actually did. You, they would be firing arrows at both <laughs> launch angles, so it made it harder for the knights to block the arrows. Okay, well anyway, hey, that's that. 
It is now time to do a relative velocity. <coughs> and then when I'm totally done, then all you kids who got those passes to the San Bernardino thing can go. Relative velocity. Okay. What? What, Chris? So how did you figure out the uh, the distance that you need uh, that you need to go in order to place the cup so it would land? I was here last night after school and I just did hit and miss until I got my <laughs> Yeah, I just moved had the cup here and the ball would land there. So I go, okay, let's move the cup there. <laughs> and the ball would land in it. Then I put a little pencil mark where the cup was and then so that's what I've got some pencil marks on that wood. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. Let that be a lesson to you. If any of you are gonna be teachers, preparation is everything. That's the soul of teaching. So if you're the type of teacher who just comes into school not knowing what they're going to teach, well then you're going to suck as a teacher. Yeah, you got to do preparation. Yeah. Okay, great. Here we go. So this person throws the ball at 20 meters per second to this person. You guys okay with that? So what is the speed of the ball relative to this person? 20 meters per second, right? That's how fast the ball is going when it hits them. Okay, but it turns out they're not standing there, oh no siree, they're actually on a train. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so they're on a train, and the train is going 30 meters per second. All right, has that changed anything? What's the speed of the ball relative to this guy? 20 meters per second. Still 20 meters per second. Someone explain to me why. Why is the speed of the ball relative to this guy still 20 meters per second? Because it's not Sorry. like relative to something that's outside. Okay. Am I saying because it's not because it's not relative to something outside the train? Someone tell me more. The train's going 30 meters per second, but what are these two guys doing? They're What's that? They're standing on the train. Yeah, they're standing on the train. They're both going 30 meters per second. They're moving together. So since they're moving together, their speed relative to each other is zero. They're, they might, this, this situation for them is no different than the two of them just standing on the ground, which is what I first showed you, right? This is the same as that. But let's say there's a window in this train, and the ball flies out the window and hits some guy standing on the side of the track. Oh, <laughs> Tell me, how fast is the ball going when it hits this guy? 50, 50 meters per second, correct? You guys okay with that? 20 meters per second because of this guy throwing it, and 30 meters per second because of the speed of the train. So it's gonna hit this guy 50 meters per second, like 110 miles an hour, which it, it could hurt <laughs> if it's a heavy enough object. If it's a sandwich, it may not hurt. But, but if it was like a bowling ball. <laughs> okay, so now I've got two other guys on the train. And uh, this guy is throwing the ball that way back at 20 <coughs> meters per second. But the ball flies out the window. Okay? And hits this guy. Okay? My question to you is this it hits him on the side of the head. <laughs> Which side of the head does the ball hit him? Does the ball hit him on the left side of the head or the right side of the head? Please think about that for a second. What side of the head must that ball hit him? Which side of his head? And then where this happens, it doesn't matter. It just does, you know, don't don't think while well, they have to be there. Maybe these guys are playing catch over there. Maybe they're playing catch way over there. I don't know. But definitely, what side of his head must that ball hit that guy? Yeah, that's a good idea. Now I can lower it so I'm not in their way. Okay, you guys ready to vote? How many people say it hits this guy on the left side of his head? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve of you. How many people say the ball hits him on the right side of his head? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, those of you who voted left side of the head, why do you think it hits them on the left side of the head? Yes, Imani? Because they're going to the right. Okay, because they're going to the right. Logan, why do you say that the ball hits them on the left side of the head? Because they're going 30 meters per second to the right, and if you throw it 
20 meters per second to the left, it's still going 10 meters per second to the right. Do you guys see that? It's still going 10 meters per second to the right. Can a ball going 10 meters per second to the right ever hit a guy on the right side of the head? No. Yeah, no way. No way. So it had to hit him on the left side of the head because the ball is going 10 meters per second to the right. You guys okay with that? Okay, now we've got to go to two dimensions. So we'll get away from our train <coughs> and let's consider a river. So here's my river. And my river has a current. And let's say the current is three meters per second. And floating on this river, I have a raft, like what Huckleberry Finn was on. And I've got a leaf. By the way, how, how many people in this class have read the book Huckleberry Finn? I urge everyone to read it. It's, it's the great American novel. It's probably the greatest novel ever written by an American in the history of mankind. So I really think you should read it. I mean, for me, it's like that or Scarlet Letter or East of Eden. You know, those are like the great American novels. Yeah, Huckleberry Finn. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm almost tearing up that one scene. Well, I, I won't talk about it. Just read the book. Just, but there's one scene that's just, I saw stars when I read it. Oh, my God. Huckleberry Finn, what a great book. Okay, great. So anyway, here's the raft and here's the leaf. And the first thing I want to know is the speed, the velocity. Velocity of the leaf relative to the raft. What's the velocity of the leaf relative to the raft? I'll give you two choices, zero meters per second or three meters per second. Those are your two choices. Are you ready to vote? The velocity of the leaf relative to the raft? How many people say zero meters per second? Hey, good for you guys. Yeah, zero meters per second. They're no different than the two guys on the train, right? They're moving together. But here's another issue. I now have a boat. And this boat is pointed across the river going four meters per second. He's going four meters per second across the river, but he's pointed across the river so that you would think that he would hit the, the uh, bank of the river right there, but no way. He hits the bank of the river there because although I haven't pointed across the river going four meters per second, the current is also taking him downstream at three meters per second. So my next question to you is this, what is the velocity of the boat relative to the raft? <clears throat> I could have used a lot of dittos there. Please think about it for a second, then I will give you two choices. <clears throat> Okay, your two choices are four meters per second or five meters per second. Please tell me, what is the velocity of the boat relative to the raft? How many people here say four meters per second? Three of you. How many people say four of you? How many people say five meters per second? Five of you. Well, there's only two choices, right? <laughs> so I'm going to do the vote again, and please choose one of them. It's either four meters per second or five meters per second. Please think about it for a second. Okay, how many people here say the boat is rel velocity relative to the raft is four meters per second? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then eight of you, nine of you. How many people say it's five meters per second? Okay, many more of you. Someone who chose four, why do you say four? 
Why not five? Why four? Yes, Imani? <laughs> because I can't four up and three that way, so we take the five. That's okay, so that's why you're choosing five? So Imani's going, hey, four that way, three that way makes a grand total of five. It's not that hard, Mr. Shana. <laughs> so someone who chose four, why did you choose four? I have like eight people who chose four. Yes? It's the same thing as, as your example, the train, yes. except you're just going in a different direction. Okay. So I chose four. You, are you mean to say that because the boat and the raft are moving together at three meters per second? Yes. You don't have to worry about that <coughs> and all you got is the four? Yes. Okay. Did anyone think of it that way? Or does anyone want to explain it? Yeah, Logan, what were you thinking? Well, I was just thinking that they're going the same speed to the right, so no matter how much speed they have to the right, they're both relative to each other at zero meters per second. So if it moves across the river, it's just four meters per second. Good. Is anyone thinking in terms of, uh, of uh, components? Is anyone thinking, hey, there's two components to a velocity, x and y, What's the x component of velocity relative to each other? Zero. What's the y component? Four. So you guys okay that that's why the, how many people now have changed their mind and believe that it's actually four instead of five? Good, how many people are good Americans and no matter how much convincing we try to do, you'll just hold fast to your beliefs? Good, good, good Americans. Yeah. Four meters per second, yeah, good. Well, let me ask you one more question. I've got this guy here on the shore. I've got a guy on the shore. Tell me, what's the velocity of the boat relative to the guy on the shore? Velocity of boat relative to guy on the shore. Please think about that for a second. Okay. How many people say it's still four? How many people say it's five? Oh, well, now what changed? Why is it five now? The guy's not moving. Good, the guy's not moving. So what's the velocity of the boat relative to the guy in the X direction? Three. What's the velocity of the boat relative to the guy in the Y direction? Four. Four, grand total of five. Good, all right. <coughs> Hey, that, that's all I need to do. I mean, I could do way more with it, but, uh, but that's all I can do with this relative velocity stuff. Now there's one last more thing, but if you want to leave and do the Cal State San Bernardino, now's the time. I just want to show one more demo. It's a demo that uh, Trevor Baker made for me last year. Trevor Baker and his dad. Is that one replacing your white one now? Hmm? Is that one replacing your white one now? Yeah, well, the white one is good because it's really basic, where, like, when I talk about increasing and decreasing acceleration. But this one is good for this really freaky trap trick there. So, yeah, so it's not replacing it, but it's augmenting it. It's making it better. Here's a second. I'll get this board out of the way. This thing always falls, so I'm going to just make it fly. I forgot that I had a seat clamp resting. Uh, this I don't need. You guys will be back in like five minutes. Okay. So here's my two tracks. And I, I recognize that there might be a lot of you who can't see this, so I'll try to angle it, you know, this way and that. But I've got two tracks. This track. And this track. Don't worry, there's you'll, a recording of You'll it. notice this track is just straight. This track is like that. So this track is significantly longer distance than this track. And I'm going to have these two marbles race. You tell me who's going to win the race, this track or that track? The one in front. 
How many people say the one in back because it's a shorter distance? How many people say the one in front? Well, now, why would you vote for the significantly longer distance? Someone tell me. Yes, yes, Anais. Um, I was just going to say because it's like a super incline. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, one of them wins, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, someone tell me more. What is it about this beginning that makes this guy seem like it might be better than this? What's happening here again? Someone else explain it, yeah, Gavin? It's accelerating at a greater, uh, it just has a greater acceleration than the other one. Okay, has a greater acceleration, which means most of the trip is going to happen at a higher velocity, right? <coughs> I mean, this guy's going a longer distance, but he's going the longer distance at a way higher velocity than this guy. It would be kind of like if you were at Raging Waters, which slide would you prefer? Well, obviously this one, because then you go really, really fast, and then you just maintain that incredibly fast speed for the whole ride. Whereas here, you're like ramping up your speed, you're going faster, faster, then the ride's over. It's a waste. Well, here, let's, let's go ahead and find out. Here, just a second. Okay, I need to make sure I start them at the same level. Okay, and uh, you got to see who hits the book first. One, two, three. Oh, that was so. I didn't have to drop it, and I did anyway. Who won? Can you do it? Because it, I can't even do it again. I can't even see loud. I know. I, I'm gonna have to point it towards you. I'm gonna do it this way one more time, then I'm gonna point it towards you, and then I'll point it towards the people on the left. Oh, I won. Okay, you guys ready? Let's see which ball hits it first. One, two, three. The you guys see the steeper one, one, one thing. It hit the thing first. Okay, let me point it towards Ezina and those people. Can you see it now? Yeah, I see it. Well, I mean, you know, Ezina and everybody else in that side. And those people. Ezina and those people. Here we go. One, two, three. And watch the book. One, two, three, wait, wait, wait. One, two, three, <laughs> one, two, three, uh. Yeah. You see that it hit there first? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys need to see it? Like, no, why not? You need to, <laughs> so did, were you not able to see it when I was doing it before? I was going to see this, like, uh, yeah, because, slope, yeah. Yeah. yeah, what can you do? But here we go, I'm going to point it towards you guys. What did I just drop? Was that a pencil or something? <laughs> I thought I heard something. Oh, here it is, yeah, it was a pencil. What were you saying Okay, you guys ready? Watch the book. One, two, three, uh. Do you believe that this guy hit first? Yeah. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, we're going to learn later on this semester that they actually hit the book at the same speed. And do you notice that? Like, listen to it. Do you hear how they both make the same sound? Which means they're both hitting the book at the same speed. So it's a weird thing. They have the same final velocity, but this guy takes a way shorter time because his velocity is so much higher throughout the whole trip. But they hit at the same final velocity. Like, listen. You know, I mean, they, they you know, it's not, like, it's not like one goes bam, the other goes boop, you know. I mean, they both hit at the same speed. Okay, so I just want you to experience that. That's all. <laughs> all right, hey, guess what? We're done. Woo! Oh. Yeah, so now you can just spend the rest of the period doing whatever the heck you want to oh, do. Yeah, I do.